Hello, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're taking a look at the cloud service Code Anywhere. Now, I have this problem in life, I get distracted by things very easily, and off I go. It's probably why I do this for a living, so when I find something shiny and new and interesting, I always make sure to check it out. And this is an area where I almost always leave disappointed, if I'm honest. When you go and see um, cloud-based IDEs, the entire ID, idea, uh, pun not intended, of an IDE that works in the cloud, that you can use anywhere, on any device, at any time, is always really appealing. But the execution normally leaves something to be desired. Now, a lot of times they're built very much around a very particular stack. Uh, so you can find uh, JavaScript slash Node development environments, or you can find uh, Roku code environments. Um, and that's you know, great if you're working in those particular environments and their uh, particular ecosystem works perfectly for you. But I find in execution, it normally falls down a little bit. Um, you can also get full on virtual machines, but that's often incredibly overkill and incredibly expensive. Code Anywhere is filling a niche in the middle perfectly. So that's why I figured I'd share it with you. Now I gotta tell you right up front, this being a game development channel, I need you to know this would be useful only for server side development. So um, you can't really do remote development for uh, anything that requires graphics or front ends or hardware acceleration or any of those things. It's simply not in there. Uh, but you can actually do a remarkable amount of back end service work. So if you need to create web services for your game, something like a high score server, you need to create a website for your server, etc. cetera, then this could potentially be perfect. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump on in. Now being cloud-based, it is entirely available in your browser uh, at codeanywhere.com. Um, it is available, there is a free tier, that is what I'm using today, uh, and then the prices go up from there, uh, anywhere between free and $40. Now the big thing is, you're probably looking about the $7 if you want an always on container. That is, if you're basically hosting uh, a service in the cloud, then you're looking at about the $7 a month range, which is you know pretty reasonable. Um, and then you get into if you have a lot of different users working on it or unlimited cloud services, you start looking at these you know, bigger, larger upgrades. And the cool thing about the multiple users is you can actually have uh, multiple people working on a project at once. So you can do virtualized pair programming across the uh, cloud if you want in this environment. And another neat thing about this setup is it'll actually run on basically any internet JavaScript enabled device. I actually had it running on my iPad. Uh, but if you have a Chromebook, for example, this is one way to do server side programming with it. Now, as I said earlier on, one of the big failings before is a lot of times the they force you into a particular development stack and that's where code anywhere is pretty impressive to sign up um, you can use any basically OAuth provided uh, internet uh, account so I used my Gmail account uh, you can also create and sign in with them uh, so basically all it takes is you know you go through the OAuth you log into your Google account and you're up and ready to go with a free account and then just kind of click in here into the editor environment now since I am using the trial version I can only really show you one at a time and what I've created at this point in time is a CPP uh, container. And we'll look at, we'll create a new container in a second uh, after I've shown you this one running. But this is actually really kind of impressive. There's not too many of these cloud environments that even let you build a C++ project. So that on its own. So if you need to do a C server or C++ side server, this could be the right environment for you. So there we go. We just powered it up. It is now on. And you can see here, here's my project view. I've got main.cpp. Here is my code. Here is the editing environment. As you can see, there is the quick jump uh, code view down the side hand. Uh, you've got your full syntax highlighting, etc. cetera. Um, in theory, We get uh, your auto completion, your, you know, basically the kind of code environment you'd expect. Uh, if you're running JavaScript or CSS, you get code linting abilities, unfortunately not for other languages. But as you see, you're basically straight out just developing in your language of choice. Uh, now what you, you might be thinking is, well, what happens if I need an extra library, etc.? Well, that's where you, you're, you're gonna be working terminal side, but you can go ahead and grab it via apt-get. And that's where this guy gets really powerful. Basically what they've done is provided virtual machines with a pre-configured code environment for you um, and it added a layer of um, accessibility and an editor on top of it. And it actually works quite well. So you see here, here is my container. I can come on down here and spin off an SSH terminal. And I have full sudo access. You can see here, I can see inside of my project. I can go up outside of workspace like so. And then um, I can actually run my code from here. Oh, it's not called workspace, it's called a.o.
Bon, ok. That should have done it. I might be screwing things up a little bit, but you can basically, oh yeah, the code doesn't do anything. So it was actually running. It was waiting for, uh, there's no front end interface on that. So I was waiting around for it to do nothing. It was sitting there waiting for uh, socket connections to come in. Uh, so that is how you can run your code on the back end. You can have it running at all times. So you could actually have a server up and running and going this quick, that well, that easy. Now let's take a look at what other containers connections are available. I'm just gonna come on back to this guy and destroy it. So that's the downside again to the trial. I basically have access to one container. Um, so it is in the process of destroying it. If you've worked with say um, Amazon EC2 or uh, Microsoft Azure or um, Google's cloud server, AWS, etc., then you've got a pretty good idea of um, what you're dealing with here. You're basically provisioning a virtual machine when you're talking about containers. So my container is now gone. I should have no connections anymore. My code is all gone. So I'm gonna go here to my settings, go to my dashboard. Da, 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 da. And what I can do is come on down here to projects. So you can see this guy is now dead and empty. I could go ahead and create a new one and delete it, but we'll go ahead and we'll work over top of that existing project. So now what will fire up here is here's where you go ahead and create your connections. And, and again, connection slash virtual machine. And here are your various different options. So you can filter it down to a particular option, but here you can go .NET Core, which coincidentally, when I did do .NET Core, and then I did uh, a Yeoman Builder to, I don't know, build some kind of a web front end or whatever, I did run out of space uh, with the basic tier. It's the only one I experienced that with, by the way. Uh, but so you've got .NET Core, AngularJS pre-configured, Backbone, uh, a blank development stack. You'll notice the operating systems. You've got a choice between Ubuntu and CentOS. Uh, Linux environments, uh, C++, which is what we were just using. Uh, so that's uh, GCC and G++ compiler and uh, GDB pre-installed. Uh, Cake PHP, uh, Django, Drupal, Ember, JS, Firehose, Go. So if you want to play around with Go, there's you know it's one of the easiest opportunities for you. HTML, Java, um, Laravel, whatever that is, Laravel 5, Loopback, Mean, Meteor, Node.js, PHP, PHP 7, Python, Ruby, uh, sales, Symfony, WordPress, iOS.js. So basically a lot of the most common web kits are all, or development kits out there, server side development kits are already in here and pre-configured. And let's go for example with Node for a second. So I'll show you the process of actually going ahead to create one of these things. So Node.js, I'll create it on Ubuntu. We'll call this Node Server and create. So now it's basically spinning off and creating us a new virtual machine. Uh, it does take a minute or two. I actually probably overselling that a bit. It takes about a minute. So I'll just babble a second while this is going on. I'm trying to remember if I actually know any of the node syntax for creating a new project. Hmm. We'll see. <laughs> I haven't used node in a long time, so I may not even know how to get a server up and running. All right, so here it is up and running. Uh, so here you can see what you get from the default containers. Uh, two gigs of disk storage. So yes, it does tell you how much uh, .NET Core application can grow in size quickly. 250, megabyte, uh, 250 megabytes of RAM, pseudo access, SSH access, and HTTP and web socket ports. And this one is big uh, because if you are creating a web service of some kind, a lot of times they will limit you in these environments to particular ports. Uh, so this allows you to get around that, which is pretty cool. Once your application up and running, you've got various different URLs you can use to get to it. Um, here is that uh, default environment. So what I'm going to do, I think it is node npm install globally express. So what this is doing is basically it just installed the various pieces of um, required for the node web server. So npm i dash g npm So you do basically have full root level access to your machine. You can run your updates. Obviously you don't have an X Windows terminal on top, so you have no GUI of any kind. Um, I'm not sure if you could set something up remotely. You may be able to actually do that. Uh, npm, in sorry, npm install dash g, uh, is it express generator? 
And while that's running, I'm going to look up the syntax for express generator. Express in the name. All right. So express website one. All right. So we now have a web server up and running. Uh, so we can switch into CD website one npm install. And run it. Hey, why did you cancel? Oh, I can't paste there. All right, that's annoying. Debug equals web site one npm start. All right, so what you saw there is basically I installed a new node server stack, installed the express web server on top of it, got express to create me a templated website. All running in this environment, we are doing it completely from a terminal. You'll see now it is listening on port 3000. If we go back here to that initial uh, setup, it'll say, to access your applications over HTTPS, make sure your application is running on port 3000, which is our default here. And then this is your link. And boom, there is my website up and running. So go back over to the code editor, like so. Oops, wrong one. Uh, I guess you're done. This guy, you'll see now here, if I expand this guy out, I may have to do a refresh. Refresh. Now it's generated all of these files for us. So we could come in here and see there is our, um, our generated JavaScript node app creating and running our web server. Uh, come on down here into our views, for example. There's our index view. So there's our website. Now turn that off for a second and instead go to my wonderful new website. So I don't know why I pluraled that, but and do a save. And you'll see you've got your typical options up here. Uh, so you know, save all, save with encoding, save without recoding. Uh, you can do code folding. Uh, you can do case conversion, uppercase, lowercase. Uh, you can do indentation options, uh, toggle and comments on and off. I've got find and replace options all built in here. Uh, go to um, different areas. You have various different view options. You can switch out your layouts, like so, or like so. So you have various different configurations you can work with. Uh, I don't know what my default was. We'll go back to that one. Um, you got not a lot of preferences, not a lot of things to change. You can change out your key bindings. You can do code snippets, etc. And then you have access to their help material. So it, it is your pretty typical editing environment. You get used to it very, very quickly. And you'll notice right here, oh, that's not it. Never mind, I'm wrong on that. Um, so my edit went in. If I go back to my running example, we should automatically see, welcome to my wonderful new websites, plural. Uh, and that's about it. I'm not gonna you know, get into the specifics of Node uh, programming or any of the other stacks that are on here because it basically is what it is. It is providing these services for you and a terminal to access them and an editor to work with. And that's pretty much it. So if you're looking for an environment for um, editing in this manner, that is, uh, this is quick, this is easy. This is a lot easier than it would be for setting up a development environment in um, you know Amazon Web Services or uh, Windows Azure, etc. It's a it's an impressive package, and you know once again we go back to the pricing that they've got. If I still have that up, no, I don't. These are these are very comparable to what you'd be paying for hosting services, if not cheaper. Uh, so they impressed me. They they have impressed me on quite a few levels, to be honest. Um, and then we'll go back here for one quick second before I finish out, and we'll just look at some of the other options you've got here. So. You can upload and download out. You've got FTP access. It's one of those things I think you have to pay for though. Um, so basically access to the underlying file system via FTP. Uh, you can run your code out here and create a custom stack. So we're using pre-configured stacks, but you could create your own version of CentOS or Ubuntu powered server if you wanted to go that route. Uh, we got some configuration options available over here. Uh, so these are, it's all um, JSON based. 
Uh, these are configurations for Node, not for um, you know your server itself. Uh, you can, and then you can go ahead and turn it off, or you can restart it, or you can enable it to be always on. It basically means that this is a running server forever and ever available. You know, so if you created a you know a high score database server or something for your game, that is the functionality you would need. And once again, that is where you start getting into if you need that functionality, if you need it to be running when you're not in editing it. That's the point where you need to go into commercial land. And I should also point this out, slightly misleading, but the seven dollars a month is if you pay annually. Uh, or otherwise it's $10 a month. So you can see the per month versus per year pricing is broken down that way. Uh, but if you need to have your services, basically if you're done developing it and you need to have it just constantly available, that is when you get into um, the pricing level uh, requirement. You can also trial out that level, but I just did a free sign up, so no trial involved. And that's really it for now. It's you know a little bit off topic to what I normally cover. It's just one of those services. I actually tried it out. I was impressed by how easy and how well it worked. Um, and I can actually see use for, you know, quite a few of you potentially need to create servers but don't want to run a server. So you kind of want a server light. And the options for server light aren't great. Um, and, you know, the options for building your own back end are a lot of what they provide here. Like, you know, if I was gonna do it, I would probably actually use Node as my backend server, uh, MongoDB or something like that uh, for the database. And this is a solid option. Now, I don't know where you're gonna get into once you start needing to hook up to um, cloud storage, etc. the pricing on there. So if you're storing reams and reams and reams of data, do research that before you commit to this. Make sure that it is uh, affordable or that you can link out to an existing database provider on the back end, you know, and it works fine for you, which uh, given the fact that you're given unlimited console level access, if you had to just install a third party service to make that happen. So that was it for now. That was cool anywhere. Hope this sounded kind of interesting for you. I know it's a little tangential to game development, but I was really impressed by it, so I thought I'd share it. I hope some of you guys found that interesting. If you did, please do click like. And we cover all kinds of things here. Normally, a little bit more directly game development related, but you know, sometimes we get a bit off topic like we did today. If that sounds interesting to you, please do hit that subscribe button. All right, that's it for now. I will see you all later. Goodbye.